Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. So today we're taking a look at how to make 3D calligraphy. I'll be showing you how I made the Tasty part in my Tasty Tutorials intro. Uh, we'll go through the modeling part and if we have some time we'll go to texturing. But if not, we can make it a part two. So let's get into it. So whenever I don't know where to start, I always go to Pinterest. In this case, I've already found like a calligraphy alphabet and I've already put it into Blender. Now, we won't be doing the whole sentence or word or whatever because it would take a lot of time and just a lot of modeling. So I'm just going to demonstrate it on one single letter. In our example, we'll just choose R. So when I have my reference ready, I press G and I move it towards the center. And I'll be adding a shift A path. So this path, we're going to basically trace the R and then try and form the creamy type of texture around it. We'll go into our object data properties down here under geometry and we'll increase the bevel to about 0 0.02. I'm gonna go into edit mode, select the last vertex and then start positioning the vertices around the actual font. So this is kind of a longer process when you're doing a whole word. But again, takes time, takes just a bit of getting used to, but it's basically like tracing something in Photoshop, for example. Now, when you run out of your vertices, what I suggest doing is just press E and extrude it again. So you're just extruding it down the whole line. I'm just correcting the positions like so. And when I'm happy with what I have, I'm just gonna move the reference away so I don't see it. And I have this. Now, this isn't yet ready to get started on with the actual bevel and inset tricks, mostly because we have this intersection over here and we have this fold over here. So how do we solve this stuff? In edit mode, I'm just going to grab the vertices that are covering the back of the R and I'm just going to move them to the front. I'm also trying to find a sweet spot where the curves are kind of natural so they are not like sort of broken or they don't have any issues with fading out strangely or whatever. The same thing I'm gonna do with the fold over here. So this vertex, I'm going to move it on the y-axis until the fold disappears, like that. Our lettering over here isn't as chunky. So first of all, I'm going to increase the depth even further. So it's real nice, real chunky, 0 0.044 in my case. And now I can go back and again, move some of these vertices on the y-axis. So I just create more space for the fold. I can also move it on the x-axis, it's not too much trouble. Let's move another vertex on the y-axis even further out until we see that disappearing fold. And this is important because we will be beveling the mesh and we cannot have these folds because they will be intersecting between each other and will have some very say, unpredictable results. It's more of a trial and error type of thing. So do test stuff out, try different approaches, maybe try changing just the structure a bit so you can be happy with what you get. Um, it's not like, okay, this is a magic formula and your all of your problems are gonna be solved. So you have to turn it a bit, test it a bit, so you get a nice result. Control T is also another shortcut that's very useful with this stuff because you're basically turning the vertex around itself, which also influences the curvature of your path. And when we're done, this is how it should look like. Nice little folds, no jagged lines. What I usually do is I duplicate and then save a path a sample somewhere. So if I'm not happy with the final structure, I just go back and restructure it and then repeat the process again. Otherwise, now we can start making this into a mesh. So Alt C, mesh from curve. This is what we get. And a very important step right now is to select the penultimate edges. So I'm just going to select the penultimate ed edges of the path, X, dissolve these edges. I'm gonna select one of these loops 
So shift, alt, and then right click or left click depending on your shortcuts. Press F, control B, and then bevel it so I have a nice little circle. I'll repeat the same step here, F, control B, lower it down. So this is why I've dissolved the edge in the first place. Because now if I go down, and if I want to create a nice, nice little bevel, I have this intersection. So I'm just going to select that edge again, dissolve edges, and I'll try and bevel again. So I have nice little continuity. Control A, scale, so I can reset the scale, just so that all of the modifiers and everything will work fine. I also select everything in edit mode and control N for me. It's recalculate normals. Otherwise you can press either, I think it's F3 or space to search for recalculate normals. Now I select edge select and I select all of the long edges. So not the short edges, just the long edges of my mesh. And it should look something like this. If we start to bevel this, by pressing Ctrl B, you can see that we have some issues. We have these intersecting lines. So we don't want that. What I do usually is press C and then holding down the middle mouse, I just deselect, let's say the first two circles. And I repeat the same thing on the other side. Press Ctrl B and now I can start to bevel. But I'm not gonna go overboard, I'm just going to slightly approach the point where the edges actually touch. Something like that. Press I and then hold control and move your mouse so it insets the faces inside of the mesh. You can decide on any depth you want, for example we can go quite deep in this example. Release control and then you can still move your mouse to sort of make a tapered type of uh, inset that and when you're happy just press left click and you're done and you have these nice little creamy lines. However the ending here is a bit problematic and I just have a very simple solution for this. I'm just gonna go into face select again, press C, select all of the faces that are inside of these multifaceted stars, press M and join at center. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, so I have the same end cap, press M, join at center, and now Control 2, and you'll add a subdivision modifier, and it's going to look like this. So it actually looks like it's kind of chopped off at the end, like a, an actual piece of cream. There's different stuff that you can do after this. You can, for example, just select that vertex, uh, go into proportional editing by pressing O, uh, press R for rotation, and then you can start and maybe rotate, try to influence a bit differently. But again, this is just personal preference, depends on what you actually want to do. For our texturing, we'll just do a very simple setup. I'm going to go into my world tab and I'm going to set up a HDRI map. So environment texture. I'm just going to choose one of the maps that I usually use, which is like a studio lighting type of map. Shift Z to go into rendered view. So this is currently in Eevee. I don't usually work in Eevee, so I'm just going to switch to cycles, switch to GPU so it's a bit faster. Now that we have our HDRI, which is just going to help us understand color a bit better, just going to divide the screen, go into the shader editor, and I'm going to add a material. So down here, material properties, add a new material, which is going to be a principled BSDF. With this principled BSDF, I'm going to press Ctrl T, which is going to set up a texture coordinate mapping and image texture node. If nothing happens when you press Ctrl T, I strongly suggest you go under your edit preferences, so Ctrl Alt U, and then in your add-ons section, enable node wrangler. Very useful add-on for quickly setting up PBRs and materials. We don't need the image texture so I'm just gonna delete it instead I'm gonna add a color ramp so shift a search color ramp I'm gonna connect the color to the base color of the principal BSDF and the vector of the mapping to the factorial of the color ramp so we have this type of structure currently it's set to UV so we don't have anything UV unwrapped so I'm just gonna switch it to generated for now in terms of color you're free to do whatever you want one thing that I always suggest or one of my approaches towards color 
is to actually try and find UI gradients. So this is how I usually decide on my gradients. I go to UI gradients and then choose maybe some of these that are kind of appealing to me. In this case, I'm, I don't know, I'm just gonna go with a really intense like this flare. Now, the beautiful thing with the UI gradients stuff is you can click on the hex code and then click on the color bar in your color ramp go under hex click on the hex window and then just press ctrl v and paste the actual color so this is going to paste the actual color into your color ramp which is really quick you can really quickly create gradients in blender that way this is looking kind of tasty so we can increase let's say our gradient our red part of the gradient like that and now we can just play around a bit with the principled BSDF. We can drop down the roughness to 0, 02 or 0, 03. I'm just going to put it at 0, 025. Call it even. And now, in the tasty part of the tutorial, I actually did a metallic sort of finish. So I would go metallic. I wouldn't go like completely overboard, but I would do like a very metallic finish and then try and dial in the specular, the metallic, everything into how it works. But for example, in our case, it's actually pretty good without the metallic. So we can actually drop the roughness to 0 0.3. We can increase the specular. And if you don't know, the specular is the amount of these highlights that appear on your material. So if you want like a really creamy or sort of almost wet or plasticky type of material, my go-to is usually roughness is 0, 02 or 0, 03 with a specular of 0, 07 and then a specular tint of 0, 04. Because the specular tint is actually sort of a factor between the specular and the roughness. So how much the specular is going to be mixed with the roughness. So yeah, this is going to be it. Hopefully this was useful to you. Hopefully you've learned something new. Uh, this is the way I did my tasty part. It's an extremely easy procedure. It takes a bit to create the 3D calligraphy and the 3D font. Uh, playing around with paths, but the bevel and inset and if done everything correctly and followed these steps you should have a really nice and creamy font let me know down in the comments what you thought about this one drop a like i always appreciate those and see you in the next one bye